Greetings. Excellent. That means it does work. Excellent. Hello. Hello. Um, one note, Tag Network uh, let me know that they are not going to be presenting this morning, so we will just skip them. They have been mostly like on vacation, so as expected for August. Yeah. Sounds good. Happy Tuesday, George. Give it two more minutes, Amy. You know, I think we are getting who we're going to get, so. <laughs> Dim, so I'll pass it back to you to go ahead and kick us off. Uh, hi, everybody. Today is a September 6th, and today we'll be going over uh, some of the tag reports uh, from our tags. So uh, there, there's your tag reports. <laughs> let's go with uh, tag storage first. I see got both of them on the line, too. Yes, nice. Hello. Yay, um, go ahead. So a, a quick update on the projects. KubeFS was, was approved. That's now in incubation. Um, OpenEBS, um, we are uh, we're looking at the uh, list of maintainers and some of those uh, challenges. Um, they're having some really good um updates from the maintainers and they're uh, and we're we're expecting further updates in a couple of weeks so i think i think we should be able to make a more detailed event early october um the 
curve storage system um, have had presented, we recommend uh, Sandbox and the Curve team are going to reapply for that. Um, and we also had a presentation from the Karina project, which is um, which is a CSI driver with uh, with the ability to provision local disks via LVM, uh, which is which is kind of interesting. There are some other projects which have some similarities to it, but none in the CNCF so far. Um, this looks this looks particularly interesting. So we've uh, we've recommended that they uh, that they apply to Sandbox. Um, we have some we have some uh, ongoing uh, ongoing discussions around the performance and benchmarking white paper, which we're hoping to tidy up before the KubeCon timeline. Um, and, and I did have maybe an open question um, around the cloud native. Uh, disaster recovery. So we had a we had a few discussions around this. Um, we the paper is finalized and we've published it and we released it at the previous KubeCon, etc. Um, but we were wondering if we if it would be a good idea to go through some sort of formalization by the TOC and and, and have it published as a as a as a as a more formal CNCF white paper if if that is appropriate. Uh, and I was kind of wondering what the um, what the process would be for that. Uh, I know I know the um, for example the security tag had published um, a white paper which which kind of went through a TOC approval process. We've never actually done that, so I was just wondering what what you'd recommend for that. So yes, uh, one service desk, uh, two. I'm I'm gonna hope that like the KubeCon timeline is possible. Um, but if it's not, I will let you know what is available. All right then. Cool. So, so we'll 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 raise a service desk request. Perfect. Then. Thank you. Uh, uh, Amy, does this mean that the TOC has to go read the paper? I mean, technically the TOC should in fact read the paper as well, but for being able to do like the whole like the hey, look, if you are ready for design, then uh, uh we, we now bring it into service desk. If you are not yet at that stage, fine. Um, so go ahead and uh, send us uh, a link, uh, Alex, on the TOC mailing list. That uh, is fine. Thank you. And also, uh, simultaneously, you can do the service desk uh, to, um, you know, open up the Perfect. request. Yeah. I so you can also, go and have, yeah. Go I would also add um, pre-drafting a blog post can help um, CNCF staff and what the expected content is and what you're hoping to get out of publishing the paper. All right. That is an excellent catch. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. All righty then. Um, and then finally, uh, we've had some interesting updates from a number of the different um, projects, including Vitesse, ZCD, and uh, we also had a, uh, an update from Longhorn the week a couple of weeks back. Um, and coming up, we've got Rook at our next tag meeting, and we're also trying to schedule um, a presentation from uh, an update on Cloud Native uh, Postgres uh, operator, um, which, is, uh, which is from the EDB team. Um, so yeah, those those are the things we're working on next. Uh, thanks, Alex. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Um, starting from the top, uh, was the uh, opening of an issue in CNCF talk, asking the question about the health, was it useful uh, as a tool that we can do this uh, for other projects when, if and when needed? I think it was definitely very useful. We we've had um, we've had discussions with the project team, and we also had um, a session with Tag and the TOC sponsors. Um, but having the the TOC issue, I think, really helped galvanize and formalize the 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 response. So I, so I think that that is actually a much better way of doing it. Thank you. Uh, and on the curve and Karina, uh, I think the thing that we were thinking about was, hey, is it just a CSI or a, does it have a larger set of tools and uh, things like that around it, framework? Um, 
and and things around it or is it just a csi like i think that was one of the questions that we were having um when we were looking at both so so curve is curve is a fully fledged um storage system there are a lot of there are a number of sort of rough edges and it's coming up to speed but but that's why we recommended um sandbox um but it's 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 not just the csi karina is is a system to allow the configuration of local disks within within a Kubernetes cluster. So it is a useful tool, for example, if you are configuring um, object stores or distributed databases that need local disks but don't need um, uh, an external uh, an external storage system, for example. Um, and it's and it's therefore more than more than CSI. It includes all of the sort of local management. So you see value in both of them uh, outside of. Um... Yes, indeed. So, so for example, um, the local disk configuration, as an example, is a subset of the functionality of of Open EBS, and something like ninety five percent of Open EBS users are mostly using that local disk configuration capability, as an example. So, so I think it is. I think there is a big demand for it. Um, and it's and it's something that is um, almost like a like a dependency for for a number of other uh, a number of other projects. And what we're seeing is that um, even in cloud instances, we're now we're now looking at cloud instances that have, for example, lots of local NVMe disks mm -hmm. um, uh, as part of the configuration and. Uh, and end users want to be able to use those disks for for their for their stateful requirements. You know whether it's things like a distributed database or an object store or, or whatever else they're configuring within within the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions from other TOC members? Please speak up. Uh, let's go to the next slide, uh, Amy. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Okay, next up is security tag. Um, who's around today? Emily, are you going to do this, or is there some, somebody else? I believe Andy is. Hello, I am indeed. Hi, Andy. Please take it over. Right. -o. So we have two new incoming efforts in security tag. One is a lightweight threat modeling guidance. The aim here is to provide a loose but uh, guardrails type frame framework for which to try and move more quickly through uh, threat modeling and CNCF project as it comes into the tag. Uh, so far, this has just been appraising um, and uh, looking at things that trailer fits delivered for Kubernetes, various other different mechanisms. Um, we are also looking at uh, in 950 the implications of zero trust for US government suppliers and how that zero trust Biden um, mandate may expand out across the industry uh, into different sectors. Um, some, uh, some experience suggests that maybe academia or uh, government adjacent places may, uh, may come up against that sooner rather than later. Then we have been running a cloud native supply chain survey. We have tested this so far. So the idea here is the test is not to draw any conclusions, but actually to shape the survey for when it goes out more broadly. And the goal is to get a good idea of the state of, of course, supply chain security across all CNCF projects. So for example, if 80% of <laughs> if 80 of um, CICD systems are on a particular uh, let's say on Travis or on, uh, on GitHub Actions, that will then help to shape where we may uh, look to perform consultations and try and make supportive recommendations. Um, and then we're looking to uh, more generally integrate perhaps with SIG release um, and sort of make sure that we're adopting the same tooling. We're basically looking to find the pain points of the supply chain projects um, instead of working on the sort of contention of a hypothesis of what people need and the cloud native security controls mapping to NIST. Um, it is uh, pretty much what it says on the tin. We have a set of recommendations that we generated 
and so uh, we're looking to ensure they line up uh, with NIST. And then we have had a couple of presentations come through recently. Um, one is Cubescape, uh, looking at uh, kind of general platform security for Kubernetes. And the other is a, a little bit more in depth from Flux. Flux originally shipped a multi tenant solution. Um, and, and this is kind of phase two of, of that approach. So they reversed out some changes and have taken this out to an RFC. There is a, a reasonable effort required to make sure that this is done comprehensively, I would say. So still very much uh, soliciting maintainers and, um, and uh, contributors rather to, to that issue there. Nice, thank you. So I had one question about the cloud native security controls mapping to NIST. Is it oh, um, in a Kubernetes specific or is it, uh, you know, doesn't matter what projects you're using? Um, it occurs to me that the number on that issue might actually be wrong, but uh, yes, so these are security controls for a cloud native um, system, including uh, the build and how it might be operated. So it is more abstract, but of course, with the cloud native slant because of the nature of the contributors. Okay, so it's not just runtime, it is also like build time and dependencies and whatnot. Dim, so it's based off of the cloud native security white paper that the group had presented on. They converted much of the content into actionable controls for cloud native projects and organizations to adopt. Okay, so is it like a check? Sorry, uh, I should have read that. Um, is it like a checklist or is it uh, actually, you know, code that will interrogate uh, where it is running and tell you what to fix? It's more of a checklist. I believe the group had plans at a much later date to try to automate some of the checks and validation mechanisms of the recommendations from the paper. Um, but providing this initial mapping to NIST will be a huge benefit for a lot of organizations that leverage NIST for auditing purposes. Now they can leverage our security controls that we're recommending as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, similar question for this 950, um, you know, is, is it starting out as a set of recommendations based on, you know, what the government uh, came out with, or, uh, you know, on a checklist again, basically, right? Is, is that how are you starting that to look at that zero trust issue? The project is um, slightly a little nascent sort of issue rather. So we have not... Uh... We've not moved forward to the, further to uh, making the proposition. Um, we may actually uh, target a white paper as an output from this. So the same form as the precursor to the, uh, the security controls mapping. Um, but as, as it stands, this is uh, yet to be presented. Got it. Thank you. And uh, the last question for me is um, any of these things uh, are being co-worked with the OpenSSF folks? No, or that is, although that is a matter of interest for us. Um, we noted that the OpenSSF have uh, produced recently a supply chain security survey um, of their own. We're not quite at the same at the same level because we're we're focused more deeply on, on the CNCF pieces there. Um, mm -hmm. But there are also some ongoing discussions as to how we can collaborate best with the OpenSSF. Um, I will drop that issue in and I can dig it back out again. But it's certainly a matter of interest for us, yes. Thanks, Andy. Uh, any other questions from other TOC members? Uh, Justin, you had you were saying something about the issue. No, it's just that the, the, the 645, it's, it's 845 and 635. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow got merged into faith members. <laughs> no worries. Okay, going once, going twice. Uh, let's go to the next one. Thanks, Andy. Okay, tag runtime. Hey, everyone. Hi. Uh, we have a short update from tag runtime. So uh, we had some presentations uh, in the containers and runtime space. 
at our last meeting, we had a presentation from Unicraft. This is uh, basically uh, tooling for unikernels, so being able to instantiate unikernels and being able to debug them. Uh, so a very interesting project. Um, looking forward to see what comes out of that. Uh, they're applying for Sandbox and the CNCF. A lot of support from different organizations and pretty active community. Another project that we have on the schedule is Lima. Uh, this is a uh, Linux virtual machines, mostly for Mac. Uh, and basically this is uh, a project that allows you to create um, these virtual machines in a transparent way, just like you do with like uh, Windows uh, Linux subsystem. This is from the same folks that are maintaining uh, the rootless containers. So uh, they're applying for Sandbox and also excited to see what, what comes out of it. Uh, and in terms of uh, workloads, uh, we had a project called Cure that is also applying for Sandbox present. And the project allows you to uh, manage uh, the reboot of Kubernetes nodes uh, this is pretty useful when running Kubernetes in production so that you drain all the nodes and make sure that the nodes are ready to be rebooted and allows uh, end users to do maintenance of these nodes. For example, they want to upgrade the kubelet or they want to do any other operation or patching to that Kubernetes node. And in terms of other projects that are related, and uh, we reached out uh, Open Policy Registry is another project applying for Sandbox. Obviously, this project has a lot of overlap with tax security uh, because it's uh, OPA policies or managing OPA policies. But the interesting thing about it is that it's using the OCI standard, which kind of overlaps with uh, tag runtime. So it manages the policies just like uh, Docker, da uh, Docker does with uh, container images. And in terms of uh, activities with the tag, uh, we have the batch system initiative uh, working group uh, creation, and that's uh, in the public comment period uh, that is ending this week. And if everything goes as planned, we'll have uh, a vote for that. So hopefully we, we can get that created uh, in the next couple of weeks. And we're also planning a KubeCon North America. It says EU in the presentation. Is, there's a typo. So we are planning a, a run, attack runtime session. And based on the presentation from Unicraft, there's also interest in creating a working group uh, to address unikernels and maybe address some of the unikernel standards. So that was very interesting to hear and excited uh, to see the uh, community gather and hopefully tackle some of the standards. And there's also a little bit of interest in creating a WebAssembly or WebAssembly runtime working group. That's all that I have for now. Any questions? Uh, nothing from me as such. Uh, any other TOC members? Okay, let's go to the next one. Thanks, Ricardo. Thank you. Hello. Hey, Matt. So um, I guess I'll start with the, uh, the most impactful one. We have a new logo. <laughs> so thank you to the, uh, a very long belated thank you to the art our art artists at the CNCF that came up with a bunch of animal logos. Um, I think in the future, in the next month or so, uh, if we get to it, we'll have a blog post on why owls, but there's a lot of cool things about owls as an animal that overlap with observability. It sounds contrived, but it's not, I promise. Um, next, there was a TOC ask to help assess the health of the Cortex project. Um, I've just recently updated that issue with um, some of the things that uh, Alalita and I kind of brainstormed around last week. Um, I won't go through all of it here, but in short, 
Uh, there's a number of adopters listed in the Cortex repo. I've listed them there. So we're suggesting and recommending um, that you know each of them is contacted to see what their position is on the Cortex project. Are they still an adopter? Are they still running it? Um, if they're not and they've gone to Mimir, what were the things that drove that uh, consideration? Uh, and or you know what what would they need to uh, continue using the Cortex project? You know this is stemming out of overall concerns around the longevity of it. Um, uh, the abandonment of the project by its maintainers shortly after it achieved incubation status and, and started to get some critical mass uh, and the lack of ability uh, or the potential uh, lack of ability for customers to have vendor supported uh, Cortex, you know, enterprise uh, grade support. Um, uh, we're suggesting that, uh, and we need to confirm some of this with the, with the existing project maintainers that, you know, there could be some logistical assistance that's needed to to help with community development and the project itself um and some other potential needs that are there uh, i guess what we're asking uh, from the toc here is you know should we uh ask you guys or we'd like to ask the folks on the toc that have connections to some of these companies professionally or otherwise if there's some avenue to to kind of have the the toc or it's or us uh, reach out to these people the right way without it being ad hoc so so that's one place that we could use uh, a bit of guidance. Um, would you like me to go breath first, or do you want to? Uh, let's talk about this a little bit. So, sure. what I would suggest is um, we can, uh, you know, we, you, with Alalita and you, uh, kind of like taking a lead on a Google Doc. We can draft uh, an email out to um, possibly the GB folks. Uh, let's target it at the GB folks, and let's come up with a text. And you know, three, four of us, if we can, you know, uh, write, um, draft the letter, then we can send it to them to see if uh, anybody bites, right? Yeah, and to be clear, we haven't formally started reaching out to these adopters. Uh, you know, on paper, you know, we have had some conversations with with people. Yeah. Uh, that either show up at the tag or that we're personally or professionally connected with, but but formally, this effort hasn't really started. We wanted to do it the right way. Yeah. So, people, right. So. Yeah. Yeah, I tell this to everyone, let's do our homework and then we ask for help. <laughs> then we can ask for better uh, help, right? So let's do that. Super. Thank you. Okay. Um, one thing to, uh, an interesting milestone happened uh, over the month of August. Um, you know, it, it was a kind of a quiet month generally, as with many of the tags, but um, on the open telemetry profiling uh, efforts, this is the effort to add profiling as a fourth signal type to open telemetry. Uh, and, you know, joining uh, logs, metrics, and traces as formal signal types. Um, that has uh, roughly two months or so, a little over two months of, of biweekly meetings um, sponsored by the TAG and Ryan Perry and some others that are passionate about this. You know, we kind of kicked around a document for a couple of months, and that's now wound, wound up as an open telemetry enhancement proposal, an OTEP, similar to KEPs. Um, I'll put a link in the slides. Uh, and last uh, last meeting uh, two weeks ago, Liz Fong Jones came and talked about um, hybridized signal types and and different ways to view them and why profiling is important. Uh, so that was sort of a timely uh, talk. But that that OTEP is up there now for comment uh, from the community. Um, it also has the support of TC members from most hotels. So so you know this has been a nuanced effort that's been I don't want to say slow moving, but moving slowly enough so that we can get sufficient critical mass from from folks that are that are interested that can help drive it so um uh yeah it's a I, i'm optimistic about its future um next uh there's a collaboration that we've proposed between tag security and tag observability uh around how to model packages package formats you know so you know npm rpm deb etc uh, as well as cves and other uh, vulnerabilities out of organizations like nist uh, and the like uh, for the landscape graph project. Um, uh, the supply chain working group uh, out of STAG uh, is undertaking some of that uh, and has a, a similar graph-based project underway um, uh, that we're that we're chatting about. So, so there's some overlap there and, and a potential collaboration. Uh, details are at the links. And then lastly, um, we had an LFX internship approved. It's a joint uh, joint. Uh, the joint internship, uh, I'm one of the mentors, as is Lee uh, from TAG Network, and it's really look, it's looking at uh, incubating and developing an, ontol an ontology for Kubernetes 
um, resources uh, that uh, has a lot of a lot of different applications um, uh, for observability and and tools that can help us kind of understand what we've created and how to observe them. Uh, so we're pretty excited about it. It just launched yesterday, um, uh, and we have uh, an intern that's been working with Layer Five uh, for some time. Um, and she's uh, awesome and going to start soon too. Has to do with Shackle, Owl, and some of the other, some of the other acronym soup that I've, I've put there. Uh, but but that's just launched as, as well, and will run for the next three months. Ah, uh, sounds awesome. Uh, let's make sure they get visibility. Um, in, for example, we can uh, ask for some time on the Kubernetes API missionary cal calendar and go talk to them. Um, so that will be a good way for um, you know. The intern to show, you know, showcase their work. What was the um? Uh, what was that, sir? Sig API missionary. Oh, API missionary. Sure. Cool. Yeah, I'll follow up if you have a direct contact. Otherwise, I'll I'll just cold call them. Yeah. Thank That's you. Great. Um. Any questions from anybody? Once, think twice. Yeah. Uh. Let's go to the next one. Thank you, Matt. Thanks. Uh, hey, everybody. Um, so our big, our big announcement for this month has been our website redesign. So this has been a lot of work for folks like uh, Carolyn Vince like along with some people at the, the CNC app to bring the contributor site in line with kind of the broader CNCF uh, website website design. So if you haven't looked at it recently, have a look. It looks it looks really fabulous. Um, another Another bit of big news. So we have proposed uh, an additional co-chair. So uh, Catherine Paganini. So if you have not already voted on that, please do. Catherine has been an active participant in the tag for a year and a half or so. She's authored some resources um, and she's been doing a bunch of our tag outreach. And so we think that she's an excellent, um, excellent counterpoint to the skills that that Josh and I have as as co-chairs and so we think that she brings kind of a nice balance to the tag so if you haven't already voted please do um, on the contributor growth side we have a few things that have been going on so uh, Noah Abrams from the uh, Kubernetes project has been working on a non-code contributor guide with the idea that you know they're revamping and expanding this guide and the idea is to take it beyond just Kubernetes and make it applicable to lots of other CNCF projects. So he's been working on this both within the Kubernetes project and then he's also been bringing it into the into the tag. So we're hoping that we can expand that and, and put together a nice a nice guide for projects to use. We also have a few folks like uh, Carolyn Vince Lake and Hippie Hacker who've been working on community infrastructure with the idea that we can use GitHub Actions for some lightweight prowl-like functionality. So you can slash approve slash LGTM without installing all that is prowl, which is um, a bit of a beast. So we think we can do a lot of this with GitHub Actions. So we have a little team spun up who are who are working on that and it's, it's looking, looking really promising with the idea that then we can um, help other projects within the CNCF use this, um, the, these GitHub Actions as some prowl-like functionality. We are also working with CNCF. So this is something that um, Catherine has been driving uh, is a contributor survey. So one of the things that we realized, so we we have lots of experience within the tag, getting new new people on board, getting new maintainers, but we've we've tended to focus a lot on getting new contributors. So people who are not necessarily experienced open source contributors, and and we think maybe we we have some gaps. We're trying to better understand the challenges that maintainers and other contributors are facing so that rather than just guessing about what resources we think the projects need in order to improve their contributor experience, we can get some actual data and make sure that we're putting together the resources that the projects need. So we're hoping that this will give us some ideas for for other challenges and other things that we can we can help with as a as a tag. The mentoring working group is off to an excellent start. They were recently approved um, and they've kicked off their meetings. We've, um, you know, they've, they've started running running some programs and the, the New Zealand team, um, this has been led a lot by uh, Jay Telhema and he's been participating in uh, Canvas Expo on diversity and tech. So the idea is to get more uh, women 
working in working in technology and getting them contributing to open source projects through things like the CNCF mentorship program. So that's that's a really interesting um, project that's you know coming out of New Zealand with the idea that we can then replicate that other places. Uh, within the governance working group, we've been continuing our mission to help CNCF projects improve their governance. So recently, we assisted both the operator framework and the Falco project in updating their governance models. So we think that that's been, um, we hope that that's been a, a helpful use of our use of our time within the tag. And then just our uh, regular reminder that as you're talking to projects as you're reviewing proposals, annual reports and things. And when you provide feedback to projects about needing to improve governance or grow their contributor base, uh, reach out to us or have the project reach out to us. We're, we're happy to help. We set aside time and just uh, just about all of our meetings so that we can you know, address project questions and project needs. So we're, we're here to help. That was my long-winded response. Any, any questions for tech contributor strategy? Thank you. Um, so I, I was curious uh, about activities in um, Q, upcoming KubeCon. Um, do you have, you know, that's where oh no, all of us like meet each other, right? So is there any specific you're planning for that? Uh, yeah, we have a few things going on there. So our, um, our update in the maintainers track is going to be around mentoring since that's our newest working group and we haven't talked about that recently at a KubeCon. So we'll have that maintainer track session on mentoring. We also have a project kiosk. So we'll be staffing it, I believe in the mornings um, for, for half the day. So that's where people can come come talk to us, tag contributor strategy, and we can answer their questions and, and help them out. So those are, I think the two biggest things we have uh, going on in, at KubeCon. Uh, sounds good. Like that's where we'll direct people for sure. Thank you. Yeah, please. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Don? Okay. Uh, I have that... a question. I have a question. So for the GitHub Actions uh, browse functionality, can that be added to the tag uh, repos? And if yes, can how can we engage with the group working on that so that we can uh, make it happen? Yeah, I would say if you're interested in making it happen, reach out to us in the tag contributor strategy Slack channel. That's probably the best way to get a hold of us. Um, the short answer to that is that right now, this is not quite ready to use. I think we're going to pilot it within tag contributor strategy so that we can we can use it, find out what what's working well, what's not before we roll it out uh, too broadly. But they are definitely looking looking for help. So I would encourage anybody that wants to help out with those those GitHub actions and that that functionality to, to ping us in the Slack channel. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Ricardo. Hi, anybody from Tag App Delivery? Yeah, uh, hi, I'm Jennifer. Um, yeah, co-chair for Tag App Delivery. Um, yes, we were mostly on vacation and uh, me with COVID during last month, <laughs> but uh, we are back now. And uh, one um, of our new things is that Josh, uh, we invited Josh Gavin to be tech lead with us and we sent an email over to TOC. So, I think there's a voting progress so if you can take a look it would be, would be great um he's been doing a lot of work and adding content like blog posts and uh engaging really well the like cooperative working group and um our multi-tenancy chats um uh upcoming now it's uh, on kubecon we have uh, a booth and also um uh, project presentation. Sorry, I'm going. I I skipped. So there's a project presentation coming on our tag uh, on our tag meetings. Um, Carvo and Arcorn.io, and uh, yes, and tag activities on, at KubeCon um, in October is we have a project meeting. Um, we are getting the agenda uh, ready and going to post on a, uh, our blog um, by next week. It's going to include uh, our like an overall update, uh, some end user use cases, and also talk about the operator white paper version two, uh, multi tenancy two, and the call for 
people to come to our booth uh, for projects that are um, want advice on sandbox um, preparations, like um, sorry, uh, applications, and uh, also get presentations from uh, sandbox projects for people to be able to come and and have a, like a like an overview of what's going on now. Uh, we are we are arranging that. Um, so by the next meeting, we'll have some a page to share with you. Um, yeah, and we'll be on the on the booth, uh, ready to help people giving feedback and also Q and A from some working group people. We are checking who is going to be uh, attending, uh, but uh, cooperative delivery and uh, multi tenancy, we will be able to answer questions there as well. That's it for us. Do you have any questions? Uh, sounds good, Jen. Thank you. Uh, any questions from anyone for tag app delivery? Okay. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. All right. We've got a current rundown of projects in here. Any questions? Anything that people want to be able to talk about? Anything missing? <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, if it's something missing, please shout at me because like <laughs> yesterday was a holiday. I, I did try to be able to like, you know, make sure the slide is looking good, but. All right, seeing nobody come off of. Uh, so, uh, Amy, uh, uh, Emily, uh, we sent out an email about, um, uh, you know, pause um, for some of these things. So uh, do you want to voice what, what we were thinking, Emily? Um, so because KubeCon is usually an event where a lot of folks are talking, a lot of the same leadership folks and primary contributors to projects, we wanted to ensure that everybody had enough time to present or to prepare their presentations for KubeCon, um, including any TOC members that are involved in any ongoing reviews. So we're trying for the first time a freeze on graduations. Um, for six weeks prior to the conference, ending shortly after the conference. Um, I believe, Amy, did we finalize anything about in-flight reviews? Uh, the one that's in flight right now isn't quite ready yet. Um, we're holding with the one that's in voting. And, and because we're all here on a recorded call, um, uh, that one has passed the vote. Uh, we are just trying to be able to get all of the pieces together. Uh, Spiffy Spire has passed the vote. Um, it is just... We're, we're waiting to announce to be able to get everything together. So, yeah. so we want to ensure that everybody is having time to perform the proper level of due diligence on these projects and provide the appropriate level of input that they are wanting and not missing because they're focused on their presentations for KubeCon or other activities. Uh, Dims, did I miss anything else? Uh, nope, that's it. That, that's good, Emily. Thank you. Uh, any questions from anyone on the pause or any other matters? Okay, thanks, Bob. Um, we actually even get time to be able to do like proper questions. Like, yeah. go team. <laughs> <laughs> there might not be any questions, but we had time for it. <laughs> yeah, the usual question I'll end up asking if nobody's asking anything is like, are there um, you know, communication big breakdowns um, between, you know, liaisons, TOC members, uh, you know, people coming in with uh, projects, applications, um, you know, please surface them up. Let's try to work on it uh, together. I know that we have some things in progress. So uh, see the CNCF TOC issues uh, and you will see some of the, some of the older issues that we were talking about, like, hey, how do we do better when sandbox projects um, ask for what do they need to do to uh, you know get in kind of thing so uh, if you see anything else uh, let's uh, let's talk about it um, on the slack channel or uh, you know we can if we need to bring it to this forum and uh, talk about it formally we can do that as well so uh, other than that i don't have anything else uh, so TOC members, please vote for the two people. Um, I think it's Catherine, Catherine and uh, and Josh. Yeah, Josh. Yeah. Okay. That's it from me. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you next time. All right. Bye, all. Thank you.
Bye-bye.